have to figure out how to get rid of them. Ugh. So, welcome to my, I call it a grow room, but plant room, whatever you want to call it. I think it was last spring. Behind this grow shelf here, um, there is a baseboard heater that we do not use the electric heat. However, there was a spider egg sac and I have pictures and videos of it so maybe I uh, maybe Jay can splice some of that in so you guys can see it I had plants going it was early early spring so I didn't have a lot in here but I had plants going and when I walked in the whole front of this shelf like I mean all the way down covered was a web and thousands of microscopic baby spiders. Thousands of baby spiders. I am not exaggerating. Hey everybody, welcome to Main Street Homestead. I am going to give you a tour of my plant room today where I start all of my indoor seeds for the season as well as do everything from house plants to winter hydroponic greens that's really my husband over the course of the year so I really use this space all year long however during the early spring seed starting season I use it even more so I just want to say thank you for watching this video and make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it and make sure you like and share the videos. If you have any comments or questions, please drop them below the video and I will be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. I've spent enough time all day long at work sitting at a desk at a computer and I did not want to come home and sit at a desk at a computer. So I wanted to transform the space into something that made me happy. Therefore, I made it my plant room and it has then evolved several times. Before I had this dedicated space, I would use our dining room table. I would have, I would put down a drop cloth and I would have um, plants and soil all over the floor and you had to step around it, which that still happens. However, this is much more of a contained space. So, Just a quick look around the room before I go into everything in detail. I have a lot of storage in here so that I can store a lot of my seed starting supplies. I also have, uh, let's be honest, I have gardening stuff in the garage. I have gardening stuff in here. I have gardening stuff under the back porch. I have gardening stuff in the garden. I have gardening stuff in the basement. I have gardening stuff everywhere. But, main components to my grow room and even though mine is it's very small in scale i mean this is the size of a walk-in closet i have uh, an old computer desk that i have converted into a potting shelf per se an indoor potting shelf i also have two grow shelves i have one that was sourced and parted by my husband and put together and then I have one that was purchased as a whole unit from Gardener Supply and that's pretty much it in addition to just what you would consider normal gardening supply soil tools pots that's pretty much it uh, I do have a bulletin board yeah, I have a bulletin board so here we are in my plant room I'm going to turn the camera around and we're going to walk through just a tour from one side of the room to the other, which is a U shape that is probably, I don't know, it's like probably six by eight, maybe. I'd have to measure it to be sure. So coming into the grow room on this side, um, of course, I have plants. This is a dwarf pomegranate. Uh, he's looking pretty sad because it's winter and he's been in here when I bring him in he drops a lot of leaves But anyway moving on shelves with supplies books um, Tools whatnot is down here on the shelf and then I have this is actually my old computer desk It's Ikea, which I converted into a potting bench 
So it has shelves on top. Um, it actually has, let me pull this out. It's a stool when I decide to sit. Has a keyboard tray, which I now use for planting implements. I have on the top shelf just bins. I'm not going to pull everything down for you to look at it, but um, bins and baskets. This one over here has um, jugs. It has looks like the tube that goes to my green stock planter. I recycle those jugs for a lot of stuff. Um, I save fruit and vinegar and juice jugs. I use for winter sowing. I use to measure um, fertilizer, fill up containers, etc. Uh, this is going to be a bin of just pots, um, various pots, peat pots, different things that I use. This is a pile of plant trays. We'll pull this down. You notice I call them plant trays. They're not plant trays. They are recycled um, mushroom and vegetable bins from the grocery store. I usually save most of these because they're easy to wash and maintain and I recycle them for tons of growing and seed starting and spreading projects. And then of course back to my absolute favorite Costco rotisserie chicken containers. I use them for a lot of growing and seed sowing. Okay, let's put those back up. Um, vermiculite, and I think that's some perlite back there behind that in a bin that I also use for potting. I have a mister to mist seedlings. This is just a little pencil worthy gig that has some tools and miscellaneous stuff in it. Um, more empty fruit jugs. I'm actually going to sow some dill in that. Mm -hmm. Did it stop recording? Oh, no, nope. somebody got a text. Okay, um, I have mm -hmm. various fertilizers and whatnot. This is for the hydroponic system, which I'll get to on the other side of the room. By the other side of the room, I mean directly behind me. So I have, these are mosquito bits, which I use for fungus gnats because I get fungus gnats in here every year when I'm sorting seeds. I have a bulletin board back behind here, which I put um, cards and stuff from family, just stuff that is motivational and makes me feel warm and fuzzy. There's my three dogs that have passed away. I have, this is a soil bin. Um, it's technically not a soil bin. I got this at the hardware store. It is a container for mixing up like tile grout. So I think it works great for seed mix. I think it cost me 14 bucks. I was just at Habitat for Humanity and they had two of them for 10 bucks a piece. And I stood there and stared at them and thought, Man, too bad I can't use two more of these because that's a great price, but I didn't get them. Okay, moving on. Um, this desk has these swing arm shelves that come out. So I have just, you know, scissors, pens, pencils. Um, this is the thermometer that there is a sensor in the greenhouse so I can monitor the high and low temperatures, the current temperature in the greenhouse. And then over here, this is actually the temperature and the humidity of the room here so that I can monitor when I have more seedlings and plants going, what the humidity is and the temperature. And when all the lights are on, even in you know March and April and it's still cold outside, it will get hot in here. It gets up to like 85, 87 degrees. So I have to have a fan. So under, under the, um, table. I just store a lot of pots um, so I have easy access to them. I have buckets that I use to hold soil, various stuff. I have Ikea roundabout uh, cart that I wheel back and forth. I store a lot of my seedling trays in here. Seed mats, just I'm constantly moving stuff around that I store in here. Okay, moving on to the grow shelves. These are extra lights so Come time when the tomato plants that I'm growing are getting really big, I will actually have set up on the other side of the room, on the other side of the camera where you can't see at this moment, I have some floor space and I buy dollar store shower liners. I will put these down on the floor like tarps and um, have 
tons of tomato plants covering that whole floor space with a separate light above them. So that's what I use these extra lights for. This up above here, I have some just trays, um, humidity domes, different size cell stuff. Those are some self-watering wicking mats that you see sticking out that are white. Um, this rack, uh, it, this rack is a grow rack that Jay sourced all the parts separately for me and put it together for me for my birthday a couple years ago. So it, I have four shelves, one, two, three, wait, one, two, yeah, four lights. Um, the space underneath I will actually use to store trays. There's probably stuff under there. Yes, there is. These are the plants that I currently have growing. There's the onions that you guys can see. Hopefully Jay's going to edit out all the shots of the back of my head. Um, I have onions. I have cilantro babies. I have yarrow. Wait a minute. That's celery. That's cilantro. Several different kinds of onions. This stuff is all needs to get potted up. The onions not, but the cilantro and the celery. We'll be working on that today. So I have a couple different kinds of lights. Let's see if I can turn this one on. Oh, it's plugged in. These have like the red spectrum, and then these are white LED grow lights, and it gets really bright when they're all on in here. But um, that's what it takes to get healthy, strong seedlings. I have two of these. This is a heat mat that's on here. I have two of these on two shelves so when I'm first starting stuff I will have them on the heat mats and then I rotate them to the other shelves as they germinate and they don't need the heat mats anymore. Um, the ha this is just a like a shelf liner that you can buy for these wire rack shelves which works really good. So the trays, let me talk a little bit about the trays. Oh I don't have another one. So here. These trays came from, let's talk about the difference. I'm going to set this down. Da, 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 da. These trays we ordered from Amazon. These are actually like boot trays so that you can set your shoes on them when you come in the house and they don't get your floor dirty. These fit great on this sized shell there's you can put two side by side so that when you water it contains the water i really like these because they fit on the shelves however they were more expensive these are the ikea equivalent so these work great you can see i have one on the floor behind me here with a passion vine in it this can get the full scope of this thing it's attached itself to the light it's attached itself to the walls. It is a tropical vine. Um, he just kind of got stuck in here and then I never moved him and now he's taking over. So I'm going to have to deal with him at some point. I'm not sure if I'm going to be leaving him in this space or if I am going to move him somewhere else throughout the house. I, I really don't know. I did buy these um, command hooks that I was going to put up to kind of build him like a trellis, but I don't know. I'll we'll have to see what we're going to do. Um, yeah, so I use these to set plants everywhere in the house, everywhere. So these heat mats work great. Um, I have this one small one which is the size of one 10, 20 tray. If you guys don't know what a 10, 20 tray is, it's this right up here. It's pretty much 10 by 20 inches and it holds different sized planting seed cells. So, but this type of heat mat, I grow way more plants than having enough of those to accommodate my meats. So I have two of these heat mats that um, span the whole shelf. You can see they're actually a little bit longer and you can trim them, but I've never cut it because I thought, what if I'm not always using this? What if I put it on another surface? And then, I mean, this is a whole nother 
like 16 inches of grow space I could have. Why would I get rid of that? This window down here you can see is just tucked down on the underneath side. Anyway, I do have a temperature controller um, that controls the temperature of the heat mats. So there is a probe, you can see it goes under here. So when the trays sit on top of this one spot um, and I can plug both the mats into it, it will shut the mats on and off and keep them at the ideal temperature, which is about 72 degrees. I do have um, surge protector power strips that have timer built into it. I have one here, I have one there that I, because I have a lot of stuff plugged in, you guys. Between the fans and the lights and the heat mats. Oh, and let's mention the space blankets. So I do have space blankets, which are like the emergency retain your body heat, reflective space survival blankets taped to the back of both of the different grow shelves. And the reason that I have these on here, uh, it does reflect the light to the plants. That's not really important. I actually have it on there because the UV light is so intense. It was bleaching out the surface that was behind the grow shelves. So this grow shelf behind me on this side is just a standard shel wire shelving unit that Jay then picked out all the parts and pieces to put it together to build this. I don't know if this version was more economical than this version, probably not, but I will say this version is way better. This one I purchased from Gardener Supply. I bought it for myself for my birthday. I don't know. I can't remember, four years ago, three, four years ago, and then this one I've had for two or three years, one after the other. The good thing about this one is it does have the, the trays are a deeper, you know, like two inch tray. Um, I will say I don't like the aspect that the bottom shelf is, there's no support in the center. These two upper shelves, there's a support that runs around across the center of the tray. This one does not have a brace on the center. So when I have this completely, these trays will be completely full of four inch pots, wall to wall of tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. This one starts sagging with the weight, so I have to be a little bit careful. So it does have casters on it. It's nice because you can wheel it around. Um, I have the space blanket taped to the back of it also. So I'm gonna be sowing my very slow um, garden plants that are fruit bearing, which is going to be the eggplants because they are slow, they take a long time to get going, and very hot peppers. So usually the smaller the pepper, the hotter they are. So I'm going to do the um, very mini hot peppers. Not all of my peppers at this point in time, most of the peppers I'll be waiting another several weeks for the next moon cycle to sow them because they will, if I start them now, they'll be in the pots way too long before it's time for them to go out into the garden. So they're gonna get another month or so before those seeds get sown. But my very hot peppers like um, chili patines and I have like the jigsaw peppers, I think because they are so small, I don't, it, it's kind of an oxymoron. You would think that the larger peppers would need longer to grow, but it's not. The smaller peppers are harder, take longer, and they like it hotter, the weather hotter. So it's kind of a good rule. The hotter the pepper, the hotter the weather. So those I'm gonna get sown today. So I wanted to be able to show you guys this when the shelves are pretty much bare before I start filling it up because then as the season goes on and I start filling uh, a lot of these, the space up, it's gonna be like a jungle in here. So that's, it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna keep you updated and do progress videos as the day, as the season goes on. So I just wanna say thanks for watching this video today and thank you from everybody here at Main Street Homestead. I want, to, I want to make sure to point out the uh, 
the cobweb up by the smoke detector. You have to have a cobweb.